These last four mills have caps that are turned into the wind automatically by a fantail. When the wind changes direction, the fantail turns gears and spindles. This motion moves the cap and turns the sails to face into the wind. Inside the windmill is the wind shaft, a heavy axle with the sails fixed at the outside end. Mounted on it, inside the mill, is the brake wheel, which is usually the largest wheel in the mill. As the brake wheel turns, it drives the wallower, which is mounted on a vertical shaft that it shares with the spur wheel. The spur wheel in turn drives gear wheels called stone nuts. Each stone nut is mounted on the same spindle as a millstone. In this tower mill, the stones are driven from above by quant posts. Tower mills and smock mills usually have stones which are overdriven, but in post mills, the stones are frequently driven from below. Grain is taken to the top of the mill by the sack hoist. Quick hands loop the chain round the neck of the sack, and a deft tug starts it on its upward journey. The pulley, driven by friction from the wallower, coils the chain around a time-worn shaft. All the miller has to do is to empty the sack into the grain bin. Quant post, or damsel if the mill is underdriven, shakes the grain into the eye of the stone. Each millstone has a series of grooves which push the ground meal to the outer edge, where it falls down a chute into the meal sack below. Since the invention of the roller mill, windmills have been reduced to grinding grist for livestock. As windmills have fallen into disuse, many have decayed. Fortunately, some have attracted the attention of enthusiasts. People also restore mills to make unusual homes. Kent County Council has saved Draper's Mill, and the whole body has been restored by a local carpenter. Weatherboarding usually needs to be completely replaced. This is expensive, but essential. Even so, post mills and smock mills present enormous problems for restorers. Hundreds of chinks have to be sealed if the restorer's work is to last. This millwright is making a new brake wheel for the tower mill at Chesterton. He has also designed and constructed the first new windmill to be built in England since 1929. New techniques can be applied to old ideas. The laminated construction of this brake wheel makes it much stronger. If the English landscape lost its windmills, the countryside would be a much poorer place. Windmills can look picturesque, even in decay. Happily, many of them are now being preserved for posterity.